Um, <clears throat> we have prison industries uh, under the heading of, of Silver State Industries. Uh, please, this is not comprehensive. Uh, auto shop, welding shop, mattress and upholstery shop, furniture shop, shop. I think, I, didn't I see some product here? Wasn't some product passed out today? I thought so. Uh, laundry and dry cleaning and other endeavors. I mean, at one time, inmate labor handled the laundry for the children's home in Carson City. A lot of the infrastructure needs, not only of supporting the prisons, but other institutions. Very important, keeping the, the costs down, the taxes down. I wish these citizens could get this, you know, stop being so damn hostile. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you are looking at a friend here. Um, community trustees are essential to buildings and grounds maintenance. There isn't a day that I don't look out my window that something isn't getting done you know, on the grounds or somewhere in the capital complex, other state buildings outside the capital uh, complex. I can't tell you how important uh, uh, trustees working for the State Library and Archives are for our programs, particularly one that I administer, the Micrographics and Imaging Program. It is critical to our success. Without prison labor, we could not be competitive with prison labor, there's nobody who can do a better job than we do. Okay, and I say that honestly. We have a talking books program to help people who have uh, sight disabilities. We have, we have an, uh, an inmate in there, a trustee, who's, who's uh, helping us with that kind of thing. All of this is, is, just tells me how many good things, I and mean, we can always find the bad things, but it seems that the media in their news gathering, bless them all, is, you know, what sells is kind of the, the dysfunction, the failure. My feeling is, okay, there, that's news, but let's also get out the success stories. What I want to share in, in closing my, my, my presentation with you today is, is an example of heroism that I found where two in inmates gave their lives to save Carson City from destruction by fire in the late summer and early fall of 1926. These men had received full pardons and restoration of their rights less than 24 hours before they tragically died. Let me read the statement of Warden William J. Maxwell for 1926, written in 1927. He says this, The good exists and even persists behind bars, may be shown by the story of the recent forest fires in the vicinity of Carson City. Two such fires occurred in the summer and fall of 1926. Inmates of the prison helped us subdue them both. The town was bounded on the south and west by fire, and a high wind almost smothered the community in smoke and sparks. This was a tremendous fire. The city was at risk. The capital was in such danger that the water was sprayed upon it. The state water system supplying the orphan's home, the state buildings, the prison, and the prison farm appeared doomed. And the local authorities called for help. Many inmates of the prison volunteered to assist. Several were organized into squads in charge of by guards and went willingly to the most dangerous sections of the fire area. They fought valiantly along with the townspeople. And there was no distinction between prisoner and free men. Five men died from the effects of the burns received, and two of them, J.E. Mitchell and George Brown, were prisoners. From the Reno Evening Gazette, September 30, 1926, arrangements were completed at Carson City today for the funeral of two of the victims of the fire George Brown and J.E. Mitchell, members of a squad of volunteers from the state prison inmates who lost their lives in Tuesday's blaze. Services will take place at 3.30 p.m. tomorrow at the Carson Presbyterian Church, and interment will take place in the Carson Cemetery. Reverend J.L. Harvey, Presbyterian minister, will preside. Inmates of the state prison have purchased two floral wreaths and two large floral sprays to be placed on the casket, and one prisoner has composed a bit of verse which will probably be inscribed on the caskets. State and county offices will be closed during the funeral hour, and business houses will close their doors. Merchants today will be subscribing toward a fund for flowers. The statement of Warden William J. Maxwell, by the grace of the Board of Pardons, they were buried as free men. But as prisoners, they gave their lives in hope of saving others. This is evidence that good can be found in the shadows and dismal air of the prison, that good must not be lost. Brian Whitmore, a brave and upright guard, gave his life in the same cause. He and Arthur Sunday of Carson City, a forest patrol man, suffered burns so severe they could not survive. Another good citizen, Ralph Morse of Carson City, was found the next day a few yards from the bodies of Mitchell and Brown, almost buried, burned beyond recognition. F. N. Dondero, engineer of construction at the prison, risked his life in attempting to save these men. He did succeed in saving the lives of others. The Honorable F. E. Meter and the Meter family is still here in Carson City, drove into the inferno and brought the injured men to town. There were so many heroic acts performed, and a number of them could be credited to the prisoners. 
The state must properly show its gratitude to the men participating in the work who still live behind prison walls by granting them an opportunity to make good on parole. The five men who died in the fire deserve honors that go with heroic death. The state should glorify such examples of courage and sacrifice by erecting on the roadside near where they fell a memorial to these dead. This memorial would also serve as a reminder to the all too thoughtless public of the great loss and sacrifice wrought by the careless handling of fire. But when you look at Carson City and you look at the buildings and the activity and the infrastructure, the things in the buildings, the, the furnishings, everything, Carson City is a memorial to the prison system and the Department of Corrections. It's powerful. You just need to look and know what you're looking at. I'm glad to be associated with you today, sharing this experience. I hope this inspires you. You are doing good work, sometimes against adversity and great odds. This is a meaningful part of society. I applaud you. Thank you very much. When State Archivist Guy Rocha gave his talk in January of 2004, no one could have foreseen that six months later, massive fire would threaten Carson City, just as it had in 1926. And once again, prisoners would have a role to play in protecting the capital. On July 14th, fire broke out in the mountain canyons just west of the city. Within hours, flames grew to a towering inferno, devouring houses and forcing evacuation of the west side. The fire raged for days before it was finally subdued, leaving 8,000 acres of barren hillsides vulnerable to flooding from winter rains. Major work would be required to protect Carson City's clean water supply. Prisoners installed erosion control devices and felled burned trees to be used as natural barriers against sliding hillsides. And as in 1926, there were casualties when massive logs rolled down the steep banks and over two prisoners working in the area. They were airlifted out by helicopter to the trauma unit at Washoe Medical Center. Fortunately, this time around, there were no fatalities. This is Gwen Clancy for the Nevada Department of Cultural Affairs. And this episode of Exploring Nevada has highlighted the contributions made by the state prison system to the capital city. For more information on this topic, please contact the Nevada State Archives in Carson City. And feel free to suggest topics for future episodes. The Nevada State Library and Archives includes reference and research. Library Development, the Nevada Literacy Coalition, Talking Books, Archives, Records Management, Micrographics and Imaging, Federal and State Publications, and the State Data Center. This state agency is located at the Capitol in Carson City. For more information, please call toll-free 1-800-922-2880 or visit us on the web at nevadaculture.org. And see you next time on Exploring Nevada. <laughs>